boys and girls, it's Miss Beth <gasps> and Ella. Good morning, Ella. Did you come to share some stories with the with the great kids out there? Oh, I am so excited that you are here. We are going to be reading a nonfiction story about families today. All right, Ella, you're going to listen up. It's called The Great Big Book of Families, written by Mary Hoffman, pictures by Ross Asquith, and the publisher is... Dial Books for Young Readers, a division of Penguin Young Readers Group. All right, Ella, you have to lay down and do a, be a good listener, okay? Show the kids how it's done. All right. All right, The Great Big Book of Families. Once upon a time, most families and books looked like this. One daddy, one mommy, one little boy, one little girl, one dog, and one cat. But in real life, families come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. In this book are a lot of families living in different ways. Perhaps there's one that looks like yours. Lots of children live with their mommy and daddy. But lots of others live with just their daddy or just their mommy. But some live with their grandmas and grandpas. Some children have two mommies or two daddies. Some are adopted or live with foster families. Some people have lots of brothers and sisters, and uncles, and aunties, and cousins, and grandmas and grandpas, and even great grandmas and great grandpas. But some people have really small families. You can be a family with just two people. People live in all sorts of homes. Some small families live in big houses and some big families live in tiny apartments and some people can't find anywhere to live. Most children go to school, but some are homeschooled and some just won't go to school. Others are too young to go to school. In some families, everyone has a job. In others, only one person goes to work. Some parents work from home and some just can't get a job at all. Some families go on exotic vacations and some stay closer to home. Some visit families in other countries and others go on day trips. Not all families can afford a vacation, but most people get some time off from work. Even a weekend at home can be a little vacation. moms or dads are great cooks. Others prefer to buy ready-made meals. Most families get their food from shops or markets, but some people grow their own.
Some children get new clothes. Others have hand-me-downs or their clothes come from thrift stores. Some families dress up for special occasions, but some like to wear jeans all the time. And some dress any way they please. Some people believe their pets are members of their family. And some pets think they're very important family members. Some people even look like their pets. Some families can't have pets, but it doesn't stop them from dreaming. And there are ways that every family can have a pet of some sort. In some families, everyone has the same hobby. In others, everyone likes doing different things. Some families walk everywhere, to the store, to school, to the doctor. Others get around in big cars, or riding something else, or on bicycles. In some families, everyone shares their feelings. Other people are more shy, or perhaps they just like to keep their feelings to themselves. Sometimes not everyone in the family feels the same way about things, and feelings can change quickly. Have you ever tried to make a family tree? Sometimes you don't have to go back far to find bits of family who come from other countries. And if your mom or dad lives with a new partner, you might have to make a whole new set of branches. So families can be big, small, happy, sad, rich, poor, loud, quiet, mad, good-tempered, worried, or happy-go-lucky. Most families are all of these things some of the time. What yours like today? And that is the end of the great big book of families. Oh, I liked that one. I always like the ones I read. My family is me and my son Luke and my daughter Grace and of course my sweet Ella. So we have a family of three, four, including the dog. Oh, I am Miss Beth. I hope you had an absolutely fantastical time listening to this story and I cannot wait to share another story with you. I'll see you next time.